Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome back to the channel, Football Therapy, with me, your host, Yeah, and that's right, here to hopefully help you navigate through an international break. Arrgh, England are very boring, aren't they? Also, Mikhail Mudrik uh, just played for Ukraine, he got subbed off. I want to talk about that a little bit, actually, because I am slowly seeing so many recurring themes with Mudrik, and he's such a huge talking point in the football media, I feel like we should speak about him again here today. Also, Fabrizio Romano has offered some updates in regard in, in relation to Chelsea News, uh, Martin and Chalibur and stuff. So we're going to get into all of that today. Thank you for joining me. If you want to support the content, just drop a like, and you're welcome to sub if you want to. You don't have to. I just rather you enjoy it, you know? You know? All right then, so before we talk about Mudrik, who's very topical at the moment, seems to be uh, on everyone's lips, let's talk about what Fabrizio Romano has updated in terms of Chelsea. Uh, two Academy products being spoken about. Firstly, Trevo Chalaber. He says it's time to go. He wants to leave. It's despite Pochettino saying in press conferences, and this isn't Romano's update, this is what I'm adding. Uh, yes, he's in my plans. Of, he's a Chelsea player. He's in my plans. He's just been injured. Upon reflection, I think he's just going to go. Look, he wants to stay at Chelsea. He's wanted to play at Ch for Chelsea. He um, sort of blocked transfers in the summer so he could stay and try and develop under Chelsea. But I think just over time being realistic it's not going to happen now you might he might be looking on the other side of the defense like well Levi Cole is a center back playing as a he's a left center back playing as a left back I'm a right center back who's also played as a right back surely I'm going to be the Maurizio Pochettino type of player well probably not because we've got Captain Reese James, who, lest we forget, was given the captaincy by current manager Pochettino. And Malo Gusto just looks very good, doesn't he? And even, even in the absence of Malo Gusto, Mark Kukurea apparently is a better right back than he is anything else. This is a very, very frustrating scenario for Trevor Chalaba, and of course, in terms of the long-term project, we have a guy in his mid-twenties right now in Axel de Sassi, who's actually playing pretty darn well, you'd have to say, uh, after maybe a tiny bit of a shaky start in Chelsea Blue. Of course, he scored a goal against Liverpool in our Premier League opener, went off the boil for a few games, but seemingly has settled into life in the Premier League, and looks pretty darn good next to Thiago Silva. And, you know, I'm a Wes Fofana superfan, he will eventually have to come back Back at right centre back, and the club invested £69 million into Wesley Fofana, so they won't be trying to get rid of him so quickly. Which leaves Trevo Chalaba, who does represent pure profit, which is a uh, the dirty word of Chelsea Football Club under this new regime, but it's free money in terms of how they can manipulate well, not manipulate the books, optim optimize the books, easy for me to say. Um, and Trevo Chalaba is one of those players that can just go for pure profit. Hence them trying to sell him in the summer, he himself blocking a move, I think was it to Nottingham Forest? Kind of understandably. Especially when Bayern Munich want you, uh, and that's still the case, Thomas Tuchel wants him, he, he wants a uh, centre-back that can play right-back as well. He's already coached Trevo doing that, so I think Trevo will hold out for a move to Bayern Munich, hoping it will come in January. But Fabrizio Romano does confirm that like, the, time is, the time is up. It's time to go. He wants to go. He is leaving Chelsea in January. That's pretty definitive from the transfer guru. Speaking of Romano updates and Chelsea Academy graduates, an interesting one is Ian Martson. Now... Chelsea have got... Um, Chelsea, remember, accepted a fee for him in the summer from Burnley for like 30... Two million pounds, which is actually loads for Martin. Um, we know Ian Martin isn't considered a left back by Pochettino, so our left back options are Ben Chilwell, vice captain, uh, Levi Colwell, seemingly first choice in this early iteration of Pochettino's Chelsea, and of course Kukurea as well. So there's lots of options there. He's not considered a left back, he's considered an attacking midfield player, which you know he's been utilized every now and again. But over time, when Nani Madueke becomes fully fit and finds form and understands Pochettino's coaching, will Nani Madueke be uh, a choice in front of him? Maybe. Also as well, you know, Martin's left-footed and can play anywhere on the free and you wouldn't say the same about Nani. But also, also, of course, Christopher Nkunku will return to the side. 
So you'd maybe have to say Martin surplus to requirements, maybe. And if Chelsea think they can get, again, £32 million uh, sterling for him, then they'll, they'll love that when they pure profit. Now, Martin didn't want to go. Of course, there was that video that released uh, after the transfer window closed or, uh, or around that time when he was going up the blues. I'm still here. I'm still here. Like He wants to stay at Chelsea. But Fabrizio Romano reports that uh, he needs to extend his contract or he will be sold in January. Of course, when it gets to January, he'll have 18 months left on his deal. Now, this is why Chelsea accepted a bid from it for him from Burnley because the re- whether this is going to work or not, I, I really don't know yet. But the new regime, the new tactics is if you get to two years, you sign or go. Of course, that in this grand ethereal plan there'll be um, different circumstances and that would be obviously the likes of Thiago Silva or some players that are like late 20s that they don't see too much value in committing wages to a five do you know what I mean but while they're under 25 or even probably under like 26 or 27 if you get to two years you're sold for like good value or you have to sign a new deal the reason why the new owners want to do this is because when they bought Chelsea and they're evaluating what's just happened, they looked at the likes of Andres uh, Christensen and Antonio Rudiger going to Barcelona and Real Madrid respectively on free transfers. Now, this isn't like players running down their transfers because, you know, they want to get a good move to, to random, you know, Champions League club like, I don't know, Leipzig or something. It's no, like the two you know, El Clasico Super Cubs, you're giving them free players. Now, everyone, even if, like, Bowley and Clear Lake didn't know loads about Premier League, they will know about Real Madrid and Barcelona as billion-dollar business brands, and they'll be like, what, they want our players, and we're giving them for free. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, apparently, apparently, they were really shocked by that, and they're like, okay, so that can never happen again. You're not allowed to run down your contracts. If you get to two years, you sign or go. And this is seemingly what's happening with Martin. Like I said, I'm not sure it'll work. There'll be over time, there'll be circumstances where they've got players that are integrated into the Pochettino's Chelsea or indeed the next manager. Chelsea are playing well, touch wood, hopefully. And um, they don't want to take out key players. Their resolve, I think Liam Twomey said this on the Athletic uh, podcast, their resolve would be tested like... Um, can you, what, you're going to get rid of this guy who's just being a really important part of your team and you're going to try and challenge for the league or a really big trophy next season and just because, he, you know, he's got two years left on his deal and you're not going to, you're just going to get rid of it. Do you know what I mean? There's going to be moments where the resolve is tested with that. But Chelsea apparently are saying sign or go in January. So we could see both Martin and Chalobar leave in January. So comment what you think about that, and we're about to speak about Mikhail Mudrik. But um, before we do, yes, make sure you leave your thoughts in the comment section about both Chalaba and Martin, respectively. And do you think they both can go? And it's, you know, between the two of them, if you get, like, what, 55, 60 million pounds pure of profit, then, like, you know, think of Gary Neville whinging. He'll lose his mind that Chelsea can spend more money because they've had an instantaneous pure profit cash injection into the books. That's my impression of Gary Neville. Right, Mudrik. Uh, he got subbed off for Ukraine. I think they've qualified. I'm just quickly going to check live, which I know, I know, is uh, not very professional, but I just want to see. They got two goals, see? Yeah, they got a stoppage time double. So obviously, Macedonia leaving themselves vulnerable, I would have assumed. But yeah, he'll be very happy with uh, U- um, Ukraine uh, winning that qualifier against Macedonia. And, of course, they got a very good draw against England as well. Um, Right. I watched this game until Mudrik was subbed off because I'm not overly invested in, you know, Ukraine. They're a good side. Uh, We're good if they qualify, whatever. But I wanted to watch Mudrik. Mudrik has yet to score uh, a goal for Ukraine, yet he's, he's their number 10. And when he gets on the ball, all the Ukrainians lose their mind. Like, he is the superstar of that team, despite not being like a guy with loads of caps or Alexander Zinchenko who's won loads of trophies and is reliable. And it's Mudrik. When Mudrik gets on the ball, they lose their minds. Now he's so, I wanna, I'll talk about what I think's going on with him in just a second, but he is such a talking point and it's because he's like a, he, there's so much to his story that makes it compelling. So like, obviously he's a young lad who's coming from a war torn country. 
you know, so there's like an illegal invasion, there's a geopolitical side to it, which is massive, obviously. So it always needs to be a great deal of empathy taken into account when you're speaking with him in that sense. And also where's his mind, you know, all that kind of stuff, his mindset, where his mind's at. But other things like, he's an intriguing character because his aesthetic's quite like flashy. Obviously he's got tat, you know, I wish football that doesn't have tattoos now, but you know, the, he's got quite striking tattoos, like, you know, only Jesus, the butterfly talent ain't enough. Um, and he's got, you know, the, the slicked hair. So his aesthetic's quite like, um, I don't know, like, uh, it sticks out. Do you know what I mean? And of course, despite, he's this really like God fearing, quite passive and humble individual, despite this look and despite all this background stuff. And that's just the sort of character narrative around him away from football. But in terms of football, he's supposed to be like such a profoundly high potential player. And before we talk about what I see in him in just a second, like I'll reference a couple of things I've said before that, you know, Shakhtar obviously said there's only Vinicius and Mbappe that are better than him at the moment, which is crazy because he's just raw potential still, let's be honest. He did do very well for Shakhtar, Mudrik, but they were just playing to his strengths. And now you don't just play to Mudrik's strengths. You have to coach and mould his strengths into the team because that's just what you do <laughs> for a good team. He's, he's obviously very, he's very strong, he's very fast, and he's good at dribbling, and he's got a hammer of a finish, which is everything you kind of need to be this really devastating transitional wide attacker for the highest level, to score like, you know, Champions League goals against the best teams, to, to score just con consistently good, good goals, essentially. But the problem is... There's this chaos to him at the moment, and clearly it's because he's just not settled, and he's just desperate to do well. But it's not chaos in the same way as, like, I was thinking of like, watching him, like, Darwin Nunez for Liverpool. Like, he's chaotic, like, he's just, there's madness. But it's not because he's really unsettled. It's almost just, like, a play style with Darwin Nunez. With Mudrick, you feel like once he gets settled, he'd be more, he'd be so... Oh, far more concise than Nunez in terms of his style. Like, he'd be very deliberate in everything he does. Because you get these moments with Misha Mudrik where he does these little side heel, like, Cruyff flicks and, you know, um, uh, turns and one, one touches and give and goes. And, you know, he can turn a defender. He can run the outside or the inside. He can combine really well. He's obviously devastatingly fast. And he has got, like, a really powerful shot on him. But everything... He looks like he's going to burst. And like I said, not in the sort of like Darwin Nunez crazy way, but in the way that he's just not grounded at all in himself. And you could kind of probably say it's an obvious thing, but I was watching him today and it was so, so evident. Of course, he got his goal for Chelsea the other day, I guess, and Chelsea blew that would help him. He's yet to get his goal for Ukraine. And that was so evident today. Like he had some really positive moments where he looked really, really good, um, you know, for Ukraine. Uh, you know, like I said, when he gets on the ball, everyone gets terribly excited and they go, ah, it's magic. But like, I don't think that's helping him in terms of him just going, oh my God, oh my God, bang. And then like hitting it wide or hitting it really high or, um, y you know, making the wrong decision. Because it, in build-up, he plays really... It's just the finishing moves, isn't it? Because in build-up, he does these really, really techie swish things that you don't see just any players doing. You only see really talented, technical, and gifted players doing. He does all that. And then you see him run, and you say, oh, bloody hell, this is fun, this is exciting. And then you see how hard he can hit a football. Uh, and you go, wow, that's a hammer. But then none of it's sort of coming together. So when it sort of, I'm just thinking when he does settle and it comes together, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say he's just gonna score loads of goals. But there's just this clear, profound lack of maturity that um, that needs to sell in, and it just feels like it. I, I wanted to talk about it because I feel like when it clicks, it's not going to be a case of slowly drip feed. Um, you know, and just find a way to play football. I feel that like when it clicks, people will suddenly be like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's wicked. Do you know what I mean? He costs a lot of money, 62 million quid. That could rise to 88 million. But I'm always very, very mindful to say that if it does rise to 88 million, Chelsea would be very happy because that represents Premier League and Champions League wins. So for the moment, 
60 million and if he helps Chelsea get up the league and get back in the Champions League and win a cup you know which would still only represent the 60 million pound purchase we'd be very happy and it'd start looking like he's worth the the money but he has these moments that he just looks absolutely like he could be incredible and he's just I feel like he's very close to the just that switch going and then the decisions becoming different now, look, you may disagree. You may think, look, no, man, this is not something that just happens. Like, you decide to calm down and make the right decisions. But I don't think it's the decision-making. I think it's, like, the um, just the freak-outs because he's not. Because, like I said, it just seems like he looks like he's going to burst. I wanted to talk about him because I was thinking about him a lot watching football. And this is a platform where I talk about my musings inside my brain. Anyway, I'll be very interested, of course, as always, to learn what you think. So do comment down below. Um, feel free to subscribe if you want to check out more content here about Chelsea. You are most welcome to. And I'd encourage you to drop a like. All right, friends. Hopefully see you back here very soon. Peace.